A while ago, I put up a video about mega projects under construction, which included the California High Speed Rail. Several people reached out to me with doubts about whether the California High Speed Rail would ever become a reality, so I wanted to dig a little deeper and explore this project in its own video. That's what we're looking at right now. Let's go. The California High Speed Rail project has been going on since the 1990s. It started out as a concept. It's now a living idea with endless possibilities for economic development, with better preservation and protection of cherished lands, and notable implications on the socioeconomic infrastructure of the state. The high speed rail would connect the mega regions of the state and act as the nation's first high speed rail system, eventually crossing over 800 miles at speeds above 200 miles per hour. High speed rail networks have been around for a long time. In the UK, there are five five high-speed lines, the fastest running at about 115 miles per hour. In France, the southeast high-speed line connects Paris and Lyon, traveling at about 190 miles per hour. The most significant and fastest high-speed rail network to date is in the People's Republic of China, with a total length of just under 25,000 miles and designed to go at speeds of up to 220 miles per hour. This network accounts for two-thirds of the world's entire high-speed railway network. The California high-speed rail is projected to be second in speed and only has to cover 3.2% of the length the network in China accounts for. At a speed of over 200 miles per hour, the system can get you from San Francisco to Los Angeles in under three hours, compared to a six-hour drive on the I-5. Cutting commute times and creating an alternative to sitting in some of the worst traffic in the country would be some pretty good accomplishments, but the California High-Speed Rail Authority is working toward broader fundamental objectives to improve communities as a whole in a two-phased approach breaking the state into 10 chunks and considering the differences between the regions when trying to connect the state into one cohesive system. In 1996, the authority was established to plan, design, build, and operate the high-speed rail system in California. In 2008, California voters approved a $9.95 billion bond measure to create the first dedicated funding mechanism for a U.S. high-speed rail system. In Phase 1, the system would connect San Francisco to the Los Angeles Basin through the Central Valley. Phase 2 would then extend the system to Sacramento and San Diego. The authority has also established the possibility of implementing the high-speed rail system in coordination with other state, regional, and local rail investments as part of a broader statewide rail modernization program and secured $8 billion in federal and state funding for planning preliminary design and environmental clearance. The first leg of the project, which is already under construction, would provide high-speed rail service between Merced and Bakersfield. The project is divided into 10 flag points. The service would reduce the forecasted annual state cost to operate the Altamont Corridor Express, ACE, and San Joaquin services from $82.2 million in 2026 to $62.6 million, or savings of about $20 million. Additionally, it takes a weight off the current railroad infrastructure, allowing for higher frequencies of public transportation services, increase economic development opportunities in the Central Valley, lower cost per train mile, and the possibility of reduced greenhouse gas emissions from public transportation. The socioeconomic benefits of establishing high-speed rail from Merced to Bakersfield, which is still only one piece of the mega project, are said to be examples of what we can look forward to when the overall project is done. This $20.4 billion capital program is forecast to bring immediate economic benefits to the state, especially to disadvantaged communities, by creating approximately 230 3,000 job years of employment and an estimated $3.2 billion allocated to small businesses out of the proposed capital program budget. With more money invested into the economic pool from Silicon Valley to Central Valley, there is estimated population growth, increased quarter-wide ridership, and, if not at the heart of this entire project, better connectivity and reduced waiting and commute time. The Rail Authority points out that it's established 119 miles of active construction in the Central Valley with dozens of active sites, has four 422 miles of the 500-mile Phase 1 system environmentally cleared, acquired nearly all of the right-of-way parcels needed for construction in the Central Valley, and is close to completing the design work for the construction. The authority also reports that this project has created over 8,000 well-paying jobs, generated $13.7 billion in economic output from 2006 to 2021, involved over 720 small businesses, and spent $4.8 billion of program expenditures on benefits for disadvantaged communities. The 
zero emissions trains will be powered by 100% renewable energy and, on average, keep more than 3,500 tons of harmful pollutants out of the air every year. Opponents of the project argue that heavy construction over the next decade will be detrimental to the air quality, marine life, and endangered species, such as the San Joaquin kit fox and 10 other endangered species in the area. The price tag is swelling. In February of 2022, the total cost was estimated at $105 billion. A few months later, a revised plan put the estimate at $113 billion. Apparently, there's no clear source of funding for the project beyond the initial line currently under construction. People who have served in the role as chairman of the rail authority at different times over the years have expressed skepticism about the project and its future with comments like, I don't think it is an existing project, it is a loser. I don't know how they can build it now and referring to the goal of running the line from L.A. to San Francisco as a strategic mistake. Former authority leaders aren't the only people on the inside that see a problem. One major project management contractor pulled out a decade ago, opting to focus their work in another part of the world that they described as less politically dysfunctional. Speaking of politics, there's criticism that the line coming out of Los Angeles now includes a loop through Palmdale rather than the original plan for it to be a straight line. The extra 41 miles adds about $8 billion to the cost of the project, Project and allegedly came about through some horse trading between an influential land developer that wanted a lease extension and happened to serve on the rail authority board and a powerful politician who wanted the rail to go through his jurisdiction despite it being called ridiculous and wasteful by a former rail authority chairman. And he wasn't the only one who didn't see any logic in creating the loop in the rail line. What else? Well, there was $3.5 billion in federal grants available for shovel-ready projects. In a rush to grab that money, contracts were awarded for work in the Central Valley, but the contractors couldn't start work on land that the state didn't own yet. Some farmers whose land is in the path of the California high-speed rail are not happy that the line will divide their land, in some cases diagonally. Other landowners and residents whose homes are in the paths of the bullet train have not been pleased with the clumsy way their property has been appraised, in some cases with no notice before an appraiser showed up on their doorstep. In the bigger picture, some argue that California cities do not have the population density that has made high-speed rail successful in other parts of the world, nor does it have the government financial backing common to other high-speed rail projects in other countries. Supporters list a number of advantages of the California high-speed rail that sound very promising. Opponents, however, seem to have some legitimate concerns with the fundamental plan, along with how the details are being executed. Time will certainly tell, but at the rate this project is going, the end result might not be known by the current generation unless the plug is officially pulled sooner than later. And that doesn't look like it's going to happen. Thank you so much to those of you that commented on previous videos and pointed me in the right direction to learn more about this mega project and share what I found with everyone. I hope you found this interesting, and if you haven't already, please subscribe for more videos like this.